and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube watching this video later on for some Orzov value. That's right. We're taking uh, what, you know, this looks very similar to the mono black value deck that I've been playing a lot and that I really like in the format. And we're uh, splashing white here for some really good cards. Um, so this was a donation deck. This was built by um, a viewer uh, of the stream here, and I like it quite a bit. This is uh, right up my alley, and this is something that I've been kind of wanting to put together anyway. I've been wanting to put together a Charming Prince uh, deck with Soren, you know, like Soren and Charming Prince. And so I'm, I'm really excited to play this deck and kind of see what the strengths and weaknesses are and see, uh, like, you know, where it can go after some tuning also. But I like... Uh, I like what we got going on here. So basically, we have a lot of creatures with Enter the Battlefield effects. Um, that's why we call it uh, Value Deck, because because of that. Um, that's that's where that comes from. So they're, they're creatures that generate value whenever they enter the battlefield. And of course, none other than Charming Prince. You know, if you have nothing out, you can use Charming Prince to scry two. Or, um, and I think that's that's just a really good mode. Uh, are you behind? Do you really need to gain life? You can gain three life. That's probably the one you'll choose the least, but if you need to, it's available. It's always good to have options. And then, of course, the third one is a really nice ability also, exiling another creature you control. You know, you get to blink a creature, so you can blink, you know, your burglar rats and fen lurkers, make your opponents discard more cards, or, you know, blink playcrafter. Um, blinking bell hunt, make them discard another card, gain extra life. That looks awesome. Uh, it works perfectly with Cavalier of Night because, you know, you can, like, flicker the Cavalier of Night. It comes back. It needs a creature to sacrifice. You can sacrifice the Charming Prince to destroy something. And then if they kill Cavalier of Night, you can get the Charming Prince back, do more. It just works. Those two cards work so well together. So, yeah, this deck looks looks really cool. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to try it out, see what, yeah, again, what the weaknesses are um, and things like that. So... Here we go. Let's play through a league with Orza value. So we're going to play until we win five or lose two, whichever happens first. All right, let's move this down here. Um... Top top tier Monday. I I do so I'm gonna do uh I did I did like a tier one Tuesday. Like that's that's a day that I that I had before. Um but I'm I'm also kind of just switching up the schedule with rotation here. I'm gonna have I know for sure like we're gonna be doing rotation or sorry, uh rank up Sundays. You know, we always had the rank up Sunday stream. But you're gonna keep that going. So we're gonna have rank up Sunday. Um, I think I may have Mondays be like best of one Monday. I think people like some best of ones. And so I may have one day a week be best of one. And I like that. It's unfortunate we don't get to play this on turn two. I think I'm still going to keep it though. I think I like that being Monday because just one and Monday, I don't know, those kind of go together. Um, just going to gain a life. I don't think I need to scry for anything in particular right now. But then, yeah, I want... Ugh. We got to kill that thing immediately. Welcome to the feast. Swallow in your deceit. <laughs> We're just drawing all the temples. Hopefully we get an untapped land and I can go Fen Lurker and then Prince next turn. Especially they only have two cards. Oh man. Come on, draw an untapped land. Untapped land. Any untapped land. Ugh. But the, the but then yeah, eventually I want to do a uh, on tap land you're one card down missed it by one card there because they usually have like crisis for their last card and so getting that last card is really valuable 
Um, but then, yeah, want to have like historic and um, brawl and stuff like that as well. And then Tuesdays, I've been wanting, I'm going to do, once we get a little bit farther from release, Tuesdays are going to turn into Tuesday Brews Day, you know, B-R-E-W-S, where we, it's going to be just like the Throwback Thursdays that we had at the last format, where we're going to um, build around car rares and mythics that just don't see any play in the format normally. We're going to build decks around them. That's what Tuesdays are going to be about. Hmm. This is going to be difficult to beat. And this is going to be difficult to beat. Man, we really needed that. Like, I'm sure Nissa was their last card. It was Their last card was not a land, because they wouldn't have got rid of Incubation Druid. So if we just would have had an untapped source, we would have been able to get rid of this Nissa. That could definitely cost us this game. It looks like it's going to. We're going to do Scry <clears throat> to look for an answer for Nyssa. Well, Soren's cool, but doesn't kill Nyssa. Same with Ayara. It's unfortunate to put those to the bottom. Do I even have Nissa removal? I have one other Murderous Rider in the deck. I'm looking for one card. <laughs> Cyborg, we got more things. All right, we gotta draw Murderous Rider. It's our only card to draw. I guess I guess they top decked Krasis though, so the game's over. It's really unfortunate. I think we had a we had a decent shot if we would have just had our fourth land be untapped, where we could have had Fen Lurker then Charming Prince. I think we would have had a decent shot. With the Nissa being gone, they would not have been able to make, you know, even at, at this point, they topped at Krasis. You know, they're only drawing like two cards instead of four. That's not bad. I can block lands. I can chump lock with like murderous rider, have it die, then bring it back. Oh no, because if it no, that doesn't work. Because if it dies, it goes to the bottom of the library, right? That doesn't work. Yeah, this deck could turn into a gruesome menagerie deck as well. That is something that could happen. Our sideboard has a lot more um,
Our sideboard has a lot more removal for Nyssa. We got Noxious Grass, Elder Spell. But this deck that we're playing here, this is why in my Mono Black Value deck I took out all my play crafters and just played four Murder's Rider in the main deck because of Oko and Nyssa. Behold, These cards are... Power. are um, they're too strong. Like you can't, you can't just let them just be able to sit back and activate Nyssa and activate Oko. You're not going to win. So that's... <clears throat> That's why I'm going with all the murderous riders possible and not play crafters. I can play Cavalier of Night again. I guess that's my best thing that I can do. It's not really even that good. No, we don't have any Ritual of Set, no. All they have to do is Ultimate Nessa and I lose. Okay, so we found we found our first hole in the deck. And yeah, that's what you know, that's okay. We're we're exploring here, but Definitely found our first hole in the deck. Planeswalkers. Just gotta... Gotta have four Murderous Riders. Um... Legion's End is really good against Krasis, I suppose. I could see Command the Dreadhorde being pretty awesome. We need to get more lands in here, too. Okay. Um, I think we're going with this. Yeah, it, yes, Legions and hit Nissa's lands, but we saw like that last game. They just tick up on different lands, so it doesn't it doesn't get all of the lands. It just gets one if they tick if they play correctly. And my opponent did this last game. I don't expect that to change moving forward. Like Legions End would hit one land. I don't want to play a, a card to get rid of one three three and still have the Nissa around and everything. That's not. 
It's not something we necessarily need. Okay, we got good mana. So Fenlurker is usually better whenever you get to pair it with another one. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm always so yeah, I always like whenever y'all are, you know, asking questions like that in the chat and everything and so hopefully I get to I like trying to explain stuff. <laughs> Your cavalcade opponents mono unmatching basics. All unmatching basics. I'm sorry. I usually just kind of pay attention to my own lands and stuff. I don't get too upset with whatever my opponent's doing with their lands. But yeah, I could see that being frustrating. It's so unfortunate that I'm keeping Murderous Rider. I mean, I th I think I need to keep Murderous Rider. Is it's too good of a card, but it's unfortunate. Like that's that's like one of the only cards I would keep here. That's not a land because we really want to get to more lands for the Cavalier. Yep, absolutely, Mr. Sarath. I think Simic Flash is a good choice for the best one event. So obviously the Gilded Goose just sitting here making food each turn for Wicked Wolf is not really something I can deal with. Alright, what's that last card? Is it Krasis? Just a land. No, I wanted it to be Krasis. All right, so really hoping we draw one more land.
<clears throat> and I get to Cavalier of Night, the Wicked Wolf. Make them use one of these foods. Good. I guess I could just kill the Incubation Druid. I'm just going to do that, actually. Because that... It's a lot of extra mana, too. So I was thinking, like, if we if we hit the Wicked Wolf, they sack one of the food to keep it alive, and then we don't block here, but then next turn, then whenever we, we like, uh, block Cavalier Wicked Wolf, they sack the other food to get their Wicked Wolf being better than Knight, and then I grasp it in response. Hey, Bertilux. So that was my thought process there. Did they just top deck Krasis? I guess it would have been last turn. Like, they drew Krasis last turn, but then activated the Druid first. Bertilux, thanks for that resub there. Our second sub of the month. Or second sub of the day. Boo. Should I put it in Simic Ramp, Cavalier of Thorns? I yeah, I like Cavalier of Thorns in Simic Ramp, yes. So that's the question. So we ha we're in trouble here. Because I need to Noxious Grasp this Krasis, but if they drew a Planeswalker, then we're in trouble. I I guess we just have to worry about that when we get there. But I have to kill this Krasis, and I, I don't want to let them untap and have... Don't let, let them untap and then have um, a Veil of Summer available. Available of Summer. Every tale about Ugh. me is absolute nonsense and absolutely true. But that was the, the worst case scenario with killing the Crisis was they had them having a Planeswalker. But I mean, I'm I'm at ten. I can't really let them have a four-four flyer. Surely you must be famished. So, of course, they get to eat Cavalier of Night with the Wolf. Paradise Druid can trade. I can't. Can't stop that. And Cavalier of Night is not really that great of a card to have in play anyway against Oko. You know, because like, Oko can just tick up, can just plus one on it. Yeah, Oko okay, with that plus one is, is so strong. And get rid of this last card.
It was Vela Summer. Land. I don't really have anything over there. I don't really have anything over here either. How do we get the murderous rider in our graveyard? I guess, I guess that doesn't really matter. Yeah, I use for the for the the definitions here. I call value decks or decks with a just filled with creatures with enter the battlefield effects, and therefore they accrue value whenever they enter. So a bunch of two for one creatures like that. A ramp deck is a deck using a lot of mana acceleration, whether that's um, mana creatures or. Um, or spells, kind of like like circuitous routes and and things like that to get a lot of lands into play. A ramp deck is a deck One that's bite, trying to all your cares are um, gone. acquire an abundance of mana. Does get tapped. Gosh, that has eight loyalty already. Ugh. How can you ever kill that thing? Quite the nibble. How does thing ever die? <clears throat> it's your favorite. Combo and standard today. So fires of invention on the battlefield, uh, like for turn four, and then turn five you play Clackbridge Joy Troll and then Ritual of Soot. All right, that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice there. <laughs> yeah, here red you can play Fry to kill Oko, right? Oh wait, no. Five damage doesn't kill. Doesn't kill Planeswalkers these days. It's a three mana Planeswalker. Doesn't die to five damage. So one, two, three. Three, six. Six plus five. 11 puts me down to 3. The shock here puts me down to 1. Maybe just these two then. I kind of want to get 
Paradise Druid, Gilded Goose to start making foods to gain life. Maybe, it, so that means I don't get Midnight Reaper. It's fine. They're down to one food for that thing. And yeah, Incubation Druid can block Cavalier of Night. That they have to block Cavalier of Night to save Oko. If they kill one of my other creatures, then Oko dies. Hostile to the truth. <clears throat> and now Othakai can finish off Oko. Block here, and then they Oko. Yeah, Vraska's minus ability can kill Oko. I wonder if I was supposed to get Fen Lurker to take this last card. So yeah, I think they want me to block the 3-5 and then they would turn the Cavalier of Night into a 3-3. I have less than 12 minutes. I don't really know what that is. Okay, nothing. I grace you with my lack of presence. No, it wasn't lethal. I mean, they remember they had three. They had three extra life, but no, I, I could have dealt. I could have attacked for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
So I could have attacked for 12 and dealt an extra 3 damage, but that's not... It wasn't lethal. Um, it wasn't lethal original, you know, that 15. I think they were, they were at 17 and I could do 15. But then they were actually at 20 because of that thing. Card. Bleh. Gosh, why does this thing have six loyalty? I can do five to it. <laughs> Ugh. Thank you so much there, Schnapps. I appreciate that. <clears throat> we about to take a lot of damage. We're gaining two life with Murderous Rider here, going to 14. We're going to take six with the two Midnight Reapers. I'm not dead yet. We're going to hopefully find something to play here. It costs two mana. Charming Prince is nice. So I can let them tick up with Nissa one more time and then kill it with Order of Midnight if I want to, like, Oath of Kaya, uh, like an Incubation Druid. That could be worth it. It's easier to deal with three threes than three fives. I cannot protect you. Yeah, I do. That is true. We do risk crisis quite a bit there. If we go that route. Um, So I could go Oketra and Cavalier of Night next turn. So this I lose two, four, seven.
Oketra making black zombies for Ayara is pretty awesome. Man, good thing we've gained just like millions of life this game. I don't know how much life we've actually gained this game, but it's been a lot. It's been a lot. This is just game two. was just game two but we fought through a lot of stuff like my opponent could have been more aggressive turning my cavalier of knights into elks earlier there <laughs> I love the tapping fake out. I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> Tap your mana concede. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that could have been good wicked. Uh going Cavalier of Night into Prince Flicker Cavalier of Night. A previous turn also instead of Oketra. Oh yeah, Oko. Oko is just hard to beat. Oko Nissa Crisis. Those cards are going to be tough. Kaya needs to pledge a little bit more on this oath. Not Kaya's not holding up <clears throat> her part of the deal, not getting rid of any any uh Oko. That's for sure. Kaya used to get rid of three mana walkers. Let's play the Scoured Barons on turn one. Our hand's already just like kind of fine. We go rad into one of these things. I don't need to scry immediately. <laughs> Prince Charming seems like a good guy, turning food into creatures again. The goose is loose. They're debating whether or not to play another mana creature or save it to be discarded. That's my guess, at least, here. What? That may be the strangest thing I've ever seen. A 1-1 one -one crisis. Doesn't even draw a card. Yeah, that's just a mistake. So, yeah, they... They thought they would be drawing a card with the Krasis.
I don't even want to trade my rap for your crisis with me having a Yara next turn. Good, no Nissa. That would have been pretty strange to see a Nissa after a crisis for one, though. Could be another crisis. <laughs> Probably a Wicked Wolf. Probably waiting for me to play something to Wolf. Maybe I should have just Othakai had this goose to keep it from cooking some more food. But my plan was to play, like my plan here is like play a Yara, then next turn play Midnight Reaper, sack a rat, draw two. That's kind of my plan. We'll see if it works out. A 1-1 one, one Hydra. I bet you can hold it in your palm. I think that's Trample. Hopefully we draw a land. We get three draw steps to, for an untapped land. It's Noxious Grasp, that thing. I mean, I can play it safer and play one of the, do one of these things to kill the, the Troll King, but... Maybe I should play it safe. All right. Well, we're losing out on one card draw just to kind of see. Yeah, we need to kill the goose for sure. I want to Othakaya the goose. I don't want to use one of these on the goose. Yeah, they can. Yep, they can make a food. Yeah, I know they can make a food. When he lands. But now, like, with that, now, you know, we, we could have killed the Wicked Wolf with, like, Cavalier. Sack the Rat. If we would have drawn the land. I, I could have used Murderous Rider, but I kind of want to save Murderous Rider. Come on, please draw a land. Ugh. Can we just get one land? Well, it's a good discard. Once upon a time is a really good card to have. Yay.
All right, we're in business. Now we're really in business. So Ketra. Now we really in business. Of course their deck is just filled with awesome cards so they could just draw out something really good. That'll count. Something very good. Soren's nice. Soren, bring back Charming Prince. Bring back a Yara. I don't want. I guess I don't want Soren to die to the one-one Hydra Crisis though. So probably bring back the Charming Prince. <laughs> the poor Prince. He he was so happy and charming. Hey, Paul. Down, down. So they still have four cards over there. So there's probably a bunch of Planeswalkers. It looks like this is a Nyssa. Yeah, they do only have two minutes to kill me. I guess that's true. I have ten minutes still. I protect that which cannot protect itself. I don't think it's Prince's problem for not really seeing too much play right now. I mean, I think it takes a little while to build Prince decks, one, anyway. But but two, I mean, I think that White overall is doesn't have very good creatures around Charming Prince. The 1-1 one -one Crace has done six damage. <laughs> a lot of damage. So they're tapped out, right? So no, no Veil of Summer here. Maybe I should just kill the Krasis instead of kill the Nyssa and just attack Nyssa. Demand servitude. 
See you, Prince. Check you later. Yeah, the flicker happens at end steps. I, I don't get to, like, flicker right away or anything. I'm certain you're quite charmed to meet me. Lord, help me get away. I invite you to Boo. change your ways. Nobody likes you, Oko. Nobody likes turning creatures into elks. Not cool. Not cool. I mean, we'll just flicker it, of course. Accept the darkness within. I want my, I want the real cavalier. All right, so I'm going to have Charming Prince flicker the Charming Prince. It's unfortunate that my opponent's going to run out of time here so we don't get to see this. But, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I can definitely play a five-color Nev deck. Jared, thank you so much. I'm, one, I'm really sorry to hear about the rough times, but I am... I am very happy that I could um, help out in any way uh, possible, but wow, thank you so much there, Jared. So what, what was going to happen here, man, um, yeah, thank you so much. All right, so uh, I'll say this. So what was going to happen is I was going to flicker the other Charming Prince, and then at end step, I would have the Cavalier come back first, and then we'd have the other Charming Prince come back. And then the, with the Charming Prince entering, uh, we would be able to flicker the Cavalier again. And so then the, Cav the Cavalier was going to come back yet again on my opponent's end step. And that's how that was going to happen. There. So there we go. Want to know. Man. Thank you so much there, Jared. All right, so five color Niv. Yeah, I think that was the, the biggest donation I've ever gotten. Um, I don't know if you can make an infinite combo with princes because it takes you know you have to wait till the next end step for like them to flicker back so it it's not like it all can happen at one time what deck are you seeing being one of the best um right now the golos field of the dead decks look really strong um they're kind of the deck that i'm playing against the most right now um it's it's still just early though you know like you know i think there's probably tournaments this weekend maybe next weekend i don't know like once we start seeing tournaments and start seeing um yeah we'll kind of start seeing a metagame after that yeah there's there's nothing it's not like uh the prince and the party bus do work well together Party bus, of course, being lumbering battlement, but I don't think there's any specific trick to the two. Um, I don't think I actually uh, attack and trade damage for damage here. With me having command the dread horde, I want to keep my life total high. I, I don't know why I didn't play temple. I don't. I just played an untapped land there. I don't. I, I guess I didn't really realize I drew a temple. Yeah, 
Yeah, I want to keep Charming Prince. Charming Prince does work really well with Command the Dreadhorde giving you more life and everything too there. Um, Golas is worst matchups? I'm not sure. I've... The best success I've had against Golos has been... I killed the wrong creature. Wrong creature first. Uh, the best success I've had with that deck has been... With, uh, Ashiok. Playing against, you know, playing against the deck, that is. Hey, Gatsby. Good evening. Okay. So I'm at 16. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8. We can take 8. So we're going to make them exile both cards in hand. So there's two Order of Midnights. All right. Worked pretty well. So we'll play these disenchants because of the lucky clover. And I've had success with Ashiok in this matchup. Keep them from searching with the Beanstalk Giant. Um Frag Boy Slim with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there, Frag Boy. Thanks for that support. We're going to update that to be number four. Um, so that, that is an option. Yeah, and it stops Fabled Passage as well. I don't think I really want Plague Crafter. I don't think. I do want Legion's End. They can get just a bunch of like little 1-1s. One and exiling is nice against that Order of Midnight. Um, trim an Oath of Kaya. So Ashiok could work. I kind of like the, th the stuff we got going on, though, so I don't think we need it. But that's a card that I have brought into this matchup and at, at other times and not felt bad about it. And it, it actually helped me win one game against this deck once, like where they were really relying, like they were kind of stuck on lands and they were relying on that uh, Beanstalk Giant and couldn't use it. So it's not embarrassing to play, is what I'm saying. <laughs> really, Molda? I'm the other way. Do you have you have two rare wild cards and twenty one mythics? Man, I would love to trade. I have like sixty something rare wild cards, and I have almost every single rare imaginable. I just have nothing to use the wild cards on, and then I have like two mythic wild cards right now, and I have a whole bunch of mythics that I want. So I guess the only way to get more Mythic Wild Cards is to open more packs. So I'm going to have to just, like, even when we have all the rares in the set, we'll just have to open up packs and get gems and just still try to get for more rare, for some more Mythics. I, I dislike how 
like these brawl commanders. Like I want to play like the brawl commanders even in standard, and those are mythic. So I need more mythic wild cards for those even. And it's like, ugh. Um, not a lot of the mythics are jank. A lot of the mythics are pretty good. <laughs> there you go, Bertilux. The smitten sword master. Sword master. All right, so they're going sword master. Come on, let's draw another land. Knock this grasp. Yeah, get that thing out of here. Love to draw a land here and love to be able to double double Fenlurker. Get rid of the other two cards in hand. No! I should have Charming Prince last turn. Oh, that was brutal. Oh my gosh, that was brutal. Opponent, why do you got to be like this? Oh, that was brutal. Ouch, ouch. Man, I had I had a I had a plan. Had a plan. Okay, so they are playing Fabled Passage also. Maybe I'll play Ashiok on the play. I definitely want Disenchant. I think I'll probably keep the Legion's End also. Alright, well, opponents. Definitely in there now. All right, so, I mean, we could scry two. But I'm going to see if I really want this Legion's End or not. We're just going to kind of do, like, some flicker shenanigans here. And so I, I'm basically putting off the Charming Prince ETB effect until their end step. One. And then two, if they have, if they have a Legion's End, they don't get both of my prints. But then I, I get to, you know, see what happens here this turn and then decide if I want to scry to or, or whatever. All right, so I probably want that Legion's End because of Knight, but I guess Cavalier would take that out too, though. Maybe I don't need Legion's End. I'm just Cavalier of Night this thing. Real glad to see the, the Black Castle so we can, you know, either draw cards or make 1-1s. One -ones. White Castle is awesome with Cavalier of Night also, though. 
you know, if if I would have waited, you know, I could like make a one one and then sack the one one to the Cavalier of Night. No, opponent has another Lucky Clover. Looks like they have a lot of black cards in hand because the auto tap tapped both green sources, so they must be chilling with black cards in hand. Maybe another Foulmire Knight. Maybe more like Legion's End or Noxious Grasp. Uh, Order of Midnight. Hmm. It's not great for me. That's just a bad attack. That's probably a bad attack. That's just a bad attack. Yeah, I mean, the, true, like the Death Touch creature is going to trade with the Cavalier eventually anyway, so maybe the attack won't end up being so bad. Well, I was certainly planning on Cavalier of Knighting that thing, but then after drawing the Legion's End, we're just going to do that. <laughs> it's back. It's unfortunate. So now I... I guess I need to kill the Ebon Legion. Because Ebon Legion can threaten the knight, like my cavalier. So yeah, seeing that they are an aggro deck here, we're we're certainly bringing in the other Othakaya. Um, you know, taking that out doesn't make a lot of sense now. <laughs> One drops forcing hard removal. What a time to be alive. I didn't have the mana to use the land to draw there that, that last turn. Like with casting the like before this, you know, with, with casting the Legion's End. I didn't have enough lands at the time. So I could draw with Castle. So why didn't they just do this? Why are they keeping removal up? That's the removal spell they're keeping up. That's a really good removal spell.
These Charming Princes have been nice with the Scry effect. You know, we've been able to put... <laughs> look at all these cards we put down to the bottom. We put six extra lands down to the bottom. And that Legion's End. <laughs> Ugh, stop. All right, so yeah, they're not they're not the Beanstalk Giant kind, so I'm, um, but still, Ashiok could stop these Order of Midnight's. Yeah, a Yara only triggers whenever black creatures enter, so it does not trigger with Charming Prince. You know, see, my deck with Gruesome Menagerie. You have to play a lot more one drops. The one drops aren't great. We have like the the cat. Oh, I didn't put the John Adventure deck up on YouTube. I was waiting for the thumbnail, but that should be done. did put it up but I didn't put the thumbnail there we go okay all right so we're at seven they have another one of these in hand now Ugh. I mean, this is just lethal, I guess. There's nothing I can... Um... I just have to hope they sword master after combat. Okay, now that's now it's lethal either way. I can gain another three life. Cause yeah, I can sack I can sack Cavalier. And bring back Charming Prince and gain three life. Alright, so definitely get these devout decrees in here. Um, let's get those. Let's get Othakaya and probably get Ashiok just to exile those things. Sounds good. Got to get exile, exile, exile. All about exile. One command is going. A burglar rant. Murderous Rider doesn't really look too great it's like killing their creatures i mean i guess it's it is a lifelink creature though also i don't want this thing all right let's try this Lands. Okay, we got lands. I like this hand. Don't know what to ditch. I 
I cannot cast a Yara right now. What if I ditch the planes? I should probably keep the planes. Ditch Ashiok. <clears throat> the problem with having it. Hey, what's up, Rex? Another month up, another month down. I appreciate that, Rex. Thank you very much. Um, do need another black land, but honestly, let's just put both lands down to the bottom. We're, we're probably going to draw other lands. Probably. See? I'm glad we put both lands at the bottom. What's the most fun deck so far for Throne of Eldraine? I've been really liking the mono black decks. Um, two days ago, I played a mono black value deck. Yesterday, we played a, a mono black um, a Yara with Citadel and draining the opponents out. I've been having a lot of fun with those decks. It's very similar to this one here that we're playing here as well. Something to believe. Yeah, I could do some other flickering. Let's just scry. That looks good. This looks pretty good for us right now. Why keep the land? Because uh, so I can cast Midnight Reaper and um, and the two t and the two two. I want to be able. To, I'm going to cast both of those cards next turn. So we're going to play. We're going to play Plains Midnight Reaper attack, uh, post combat sack of Charming Prince draw two, including drawing that one one, and then play the one one. No, oh my gosh. Oh, I auto tap got me. I got auto tapped.
You can sac... Oh, you can only sacrifice black creatures. Oh, I didn't really realize that. <laughs> I honestly didn't really realize that. I knew it only triggered for black creatures entering, but I thought you could sacrifice any creature. But I guess, yeah, you, you can only sacrifice black creatures. Still got auto-tapped. So, yeah, they can... They can go Lucky Clover plus bring both of those back, but they don't have anything out here. Um. Basically doing this right now, see if we hit some land drops. Really good call by putting these lands down at the bottom earlier. That hurts. You should fear those horn of darkness. Yeah, I the the options there because we had to get rid of that that Smith, this order of midnight so they don't get a bunch of creatures back. So the option was either to get back Fenlurker or get back the Charming Prince. Um, Charming Prince does not attack through Murderous Rider, but the Fenlurker can. And uh, Charming Prince would just have them discard. <laughs> yeah, a Yara Soren, yeah, that's, that's some good cycle value. So not doing the first part. Not going to draw two, lose two. Well, that's it. All right, one game number two. Match number two. A pretty slow deck here. That's all right. It's a fun one to play. Yeah, I guess with them being at six, they don't want to lose the two life. That's 
that's my guess there. All right, what do we got here? We got to keep. I don't love having the two five drops in hand, though. Not with um, only three lands here. Kinda hope my opponent's not playing just a whole bunch of mana creatures because it makes Playcrafter worse. Hoping Playcrafter is good against our opponent. And that means that they would be playing a low number of threats. <clears throat> Once upon a time does not really mean a low number of threats. These two don't really go together. Ugh. Playcrafter is so bad against Grazer. There's so many grazers running around. This is so bad against that. So I can Oath of Kaya Grazer. Ugh. This is a nightmare <laughs> for Playcrafter. I'd have to say that the, the card that... <clears throat> the most disappointing card for sure in this format for me has been Playcrafter because, you know, I started, like, the Mono Black Value the first time I played it. I played four Playcrafters, and they were just really bad a lot. And it's kind of like this. They're just really too bad, too bad to play. And it's really disappointing. I like Playcrafter a, a ton. But un unfortunately, they just need to be Midnight Riders. I like Playcrafter more as a card. They missed a land drop, so I really want a bell hunt. It's a good sign for me. I'm guessing like maybe they have another Teferi. Maybe they want to rebounce Krasis. All right, so do I sacrifice Bell Hunt or Midnight Reaper to Cavalier to kill this Golos? Having Midnight Re Reaper in the graveyard is good because if Cavalier dies, we can get the Midnight Reaper back. And Midnight Reaper does not get through a Field of the Dead token. But also having Midnight Reaper in play, so if everything dies, is also better for me. There's a Sweeper. That's how they're aggressively blocking kind of makes it seem like there's going to be a Sweeper.
did have that sweeper, that time wipe, something to pick up, pick crisis back up. I'll protect you. Okay, Karmic, have, were you trying out the Sultai mid range that I played earlier? That I played like a week ago or so? Were you trying? Is that the Sultai deck you were trying out? Or are you just. Um, so I, I want to get back to that deck. Because I like a lot of stuff that Sultai has going on. Okay, you're just putting together your own deck there. Okay. The deck that I was playing... was a viewer submitted deck. Um, okay, you were trying Krasis? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't have Krasis, no. So it was a viewer submitted deck. Um, I'll see if I can find it up on the YouTube channel. Sultai mid range. Oh, okay, I've there done it is. hero thing before. Here's the deck list. There's the link to the list. All right, so we get Midnight Reaper back. Yeah. Uh well, just if you want to see, if you want to see, yeah, like whatever the song is, just do. You just type exclamation point song in the chat, and it'll and uh, it takes about fifteen to fifteen thirty seconds, something like that. It takes a little bit, but then, but then the um, song title and and artists and stuff show up usually. That's how it was meant to happen. How do we actually stop <laughs> this castle from always finding them Golo so it just gets more and more of these two twos? I don't I don't know. We're gonna have to find like Soren. I don't know. Let me 
I guess they can't actually activate go Golos. I guess <clears throat> we need the what do we need? We need Oketra, maybe? Obviously we have Legion's Ends that like later on after they get more and more lands we could find Legion's End. They didn't upkeep Scry. I guess I could keep... I was planning on sacrificing the Order of Midnight, but I guess I could keep it around to just attack for two in the air. I guess I could keep it around. Hmm. I don't know what they drew that they just don't play it. I don't know if it's a time wipe. They only have one white source for a time wipe anyway. Don't know if I was supposed to attack with like the Cavalier, let it die, then bring it back and you know bring a discard spell back. <clears throat> make them discard that like if it's time wipe it, it could be growth spiral also like growth spiral would have been a good one feels like time wipe why have elemental decks disappeared um Oko is a big part of that. Oko turning the elementals. That's a risky block. I could have just had a removal spell to blow that up. Oko turning the elementals into elks is rough. Yep, sweeper. Okay, maybe those are, maybe they just have the two sweepers in the main. Yep, yep, Papa. Yeah, uh, Papa Croft. Yeah, Hawkeye's doing great. He's just up on the bed taking a nap right now. He'll be up later whenever he wants food. I just realized that this deck, like, I don't know how long we've been playing this deck, but it's probably been a couple hours. 
for this is the third match. I was looking at seven o'clock already. <laughs> we'll see if hopefully we have enough time for the other two decks. Um, let's get this extra legions end in. Noxious Grasp does kill, you know, Krasis and Teferi. Same with Ryder. Playcrafter, Oath of Kaya. Oh, wrong one. I want to take out this one. Even though that is a flyer, I guess. Usually hogs the camera more than you do. <laughs> uh, Joint Adventures, we we actually know we, uh, we didn't play against Golos Field. We lost to some aggressive decks like Mono Red Cavalcade and then also Mono Black Value that, that drained us out with Ayara. Um, really, you know, we kind of struggled with like the aggro a little bit, like could have really used some life gain somehow. I don't know exactly what the life gain would be. I also don't know exactly why I'm keeping this hand. Hopefully we draw Ashiok. So I guess my opponent has Veil of Summer. That's cool. Or at least they want to pay two life to tell me they have Veil of Summer. Whether or not they have it. Timing. Doubt that. I've got time. I don't think I don't think that's what you're known for, Teferi. Excellent now timing. What? I think you're known for being a jerk. Big jerk. Not letting anybody have any fun. Can't wait for M21 to fairy block. Ugh. Yeah, but besides that, with elementals, as we were talking about earlier, I would like that land. But I also need spells. I need spells. I need spells more. Like, I wouldn't be sad if we drew that, but I don't want to keep that on top. Um,. You know, like, beginning of the metagame, it's been just pretty aggressive. The elemental decks are also three colors. Like, the mana base has really taken a hit, and they're usually not necessarily the best against the aggressive decks anyway. And so, like, there's been a lot of, you know, like, ag aggressive, like, even Rotting Regisaur decks and everything like that. I think I just activate over playing this other, this Murderous Rider here because of Sweepers. Yeah, I'm definitely playing the Rat. So then it's... I guess, I don't know, the rider doesn't go to the graveyard anyway, so. Yeah, that's fine. I'll just activate that thing. Had to ditch the Veil of Summer. They could have cycled it. And then seeing if they want to ditch it. Uh, 
passed away in the song and the tree. Yeah, get out of here, Agent of Treachery. I've got it. I wish I had wish I had another command to get grab that agent of treachery. Cost a little bit of mana though. I don't think Don't think I necessarily want to bounce the Realm Club Giant. Get a zombie. There we go. Ooh, Soren. Okay. Soren's pretty cool. That's more like it. Let me remind you to fear those born of darkness. Cavalier already has lifelink. Three, three and zero. Oh. Is it only just three and zero? Oh? Are we sure it's not five and zero oh yet? Ah, it is just three and zero. Oh. <laughs> this is such a slow standard format. I mean, they're they're good games and everything, but it takes a while. Yeah, I could have I could have instant speed the rider there. I guess I didn't need to sorcery speed it. Uh, let's draw white lands. This hand looks pretty awesome if we draw white land. <laughs> Thanks, Rex. Going back and fact checking. So we're actually twenty seven to know with the deck. <laughs> At least 13 and 0. Maybe there's a 1 in front of that 3. 13 and 0. I'm feeling in love. Such violence is made of gold. Burglar Rat, that's a good card. 
Did they get rid of a Narset? No wonder they got rid of Narset. How are you supposed to play Narset with Temple of Scryumph and Mountain? What are we doing over there? Fay of Wishes. Boo. When Faye of Wishes plays basketball, it's all layup swishes. I'm sorry, that was bad. <laughs> Bay of Dishes? Right on schedule. That's whenever doing Might be a bad doing idea. the dishes. Could be you could do Yeah, I won't play crafter. This is a good play crafter matchup. Oh, that didn't pan out. <laughs> what a mess I've made. So it's basically either either just attack to fairy for one or uh no draw you know. Game. Attack for one and get to draw a card, or attack for two. Here we go. <laughs> Don't apologize for poetry. I think it's it's better like if you have, you know, if you, uh, whenever you're clearing the table, and you know if you're like a a busboy clearing a table at a restaurant, you have a tray of dishes. That works pretty well. So they played nothing. I guess they can't play instants because of fires, so I guess I don't have to worry about an instant. So we'll just get rid of the cards in their hand. What you got over there? That you just didn't play. Things that cost mana. Most likely. Stop that now. Hmm. It's a nice castle. Let's try this. They could just top deck a wrath, but I guess I have I have my own castle and I have Soren that can bring stuff back. Don't make another move. I am whole. Time. All right, we're up to 34. Oh, yeah, definitely cheering for the Twins tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm a big Twins fan. And the Twins and the Rangers are my two baseball teams. Uh, twins, because, you know, being born in Iowa, they were like my childhood team. But then I moved to, to Texas and lived most of my life in Texas. Like, they're next in the Dallas area where the Rangers are. So, so I have kind of two baseball teams. Ugh. So yeah, I'll be watching that game here after after the stream tonight. I have it recording. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'll get my popcorn ready. So what are they doing? They're doing like some lame planeswalker stuff. So we should probably have Elder Spell. This kills Sarkin. This kills other things that aren't Sarkin, like Teferi. I don't know if I actually want that other card. This can just, like, get rid of stuff. I don't even know if Ashiok's good. I want Duress. I guess we would Disenchant Fires. Yeah, we definitely want Murderous Rider, though. We're riding dirty here. All right. I'm off of Noxious Grasp. That one's gone. Um, let's see... We're going to cut Othakaya. I mean, Othakaya does kill their Planeswalkers effectively as well. We can, like, trim a couple of Cavalier Knight. Order of Midnight. This doesn't really feel like an Ayara matchup. 61. I 
And getting, getting rid of Sarkin is pretty important. I'll just go one decree, though. All right. Uh, no, I'm actually not. I'm not actually a real big popcorn fan. Um, I like popcorn and stuff, but every time I eat popcorn, I feel really bad. Like later on in the day, and especially like the next day, it makes my stomach hurt. I always feel pretty bad after stuff in my face with popcorn. Could have seen taking out an Oketra. Prince has been awesome. Yeah, Charming Prince really like the really like that card. It's been awesome. Go 61. Are they shocking in for negate? Scorching dragon fire. Literal shock. Shock for shock. Responsibility. Do you? No, I am not making this up as I go. So if they would have ticked up to Fairy and left the minus available to be able to bounce Reaper, I think I probably would have just played Ashiok. Trust me, I have a plan. Gross. Oh, I definitely wanted to get the duress in there, but that's... Unfortunately, we didn't get anything. Ugh. We hit three lands and an R set. I want to get good spells. We are shutting down the Scry land pretty well. This might be a bad idea. So playing Oketra just gets bounced by Teferi. I'm going to keep them from being able to... Alright. Got rid of a Sarkin. That's good. One Sarkin down. I, of course, want to get rid of Feo Wishes. I'm going to keep them from being able to bounce with Teferi. And being able to, you know, keep them from drawing a card. Where next turn I can play Oketra they, and not let them be able to bounce it. I don't care too much about the Clarions, but getting rid of the Sarkin's good. Okay, that's good. That's good. I demand certitude. We will meet again. Right, double Narset, that's good. Double Narset's good. No, Ashiok. 
Splashy Ock. I said three. So we don't have lethal yet. Hmm. We could have like planar cleansing. Four and now. Okay, we're gonna reset Arena here too, because it's been on for a while. Let's reset before our 5 0 match. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't reset. Eh, it's it's getting jumpy. Maybe we'll hopefully that doesn't just give us a lot of bad luck now. Hopefully we didn't just like use all the luck there. <laughs> All right, yeah, final boss. Here we go. Let's get that final boss playlist up and going. Five Wind Dream still alive. Let's see if we can get there. Let's go. Yeah, that's a that's definitely a good matchup for us. That's a very good play crafter matchup, but yeah. The slow decks like that, that's it's very good for us. Yeah, the yep. Yep, the play any deck, win every card uh event is this weekend, the fifth through the seventh, so Today the fifth? Today's the fourth. So starting at tomorrow. Tomorrow. I don't know the exact time, honestly, that it starts. I'm surprised it's not You know, like when you sign on Arena, like they usually have like the event starting in, you know, however many times. You know, like, it shows, like, the hours, like, a countdown and, you know, like, you know, gets you hyped for it. I'm really surprised it's not on Arena. Thanks, Julius. Your deck's working really well here. Down, 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 down. All right, so it looks like we have probably another mono, like, just a mono black matchup here. That's what it looks like. Could be red black. Looks like it's probably mono black. I know that's not a very good trade for me. At least they don't have Carter Runs in play here for the Priest now.
Yeah, I guess play crafter. I don't know. May not have a creature to be able to sacrifice to this Cavalier of Night. That really hurts. That should be lethal now. Yeah. Should have killed the Spawn of Mayhem instead of playing the Playcrafter. Should have played Cavalier of Night and killed Spawn of Mayhem. I didn't. I just didn't love them having Priest still out, but that's what I should have done. I messed that up. Okay, so let's get a little bit more removal in here. Take out these Command the Dread Hordes. And Play Crafter. Just don't like Play Crafter against the Gutter Bones deck too much. That looks good. Looks as good as we're going to do. Let's try this out. So yeah, they have a lot of cards that are problems. Rankle, Spawn of Mayhem, Ayara, Priest. We can't kill all of them. Hmm. No, the event isn't until tomorrow. It, has, it starts tomorrow. I like the first five cards. Well, I like... Like this, like that, like that, like that. This is okay, I guess. These are good if we get their mana wise. I think it's probably a keep though. Yeah, this is a tough this is a tough keep. This is like a about as as bad as a keep we can have. Like I wish this was even a Scryland. If I knew I had got Eternal Oketra on top, I would definitely mulligan. I don't have, you know, we took out the six drops. We don't have hardly any other five drops. That's that's really unlucky. They're drawing an immediate five drop. That's honestly the worst thing we can draw is immediate five drop. Well, this went terribly. Should take decree. Should have just blocked. Blocking means that they have to spend the full four mana on spawn. Come on, draw land. Oh my gosh. Definitely want to land to be able to play Fenlurker. Alright, well this did not play well for me.
that this keep did not work out. Drawing two other five drops. I had I had three other five drops in the entire deck. Drawing two of the three. You know, like that's I don't know exactly what the odds are of drawing two out of three five drops that are in the deck. I don't know what the odds are, but it's not good. But I mean, I didn't. I didn't play perfectly. I, I guess I, I need to block with my one-one on the two-one. You know, not let them drill bit immediately. Uh, I need to make that block. And that block kind of makes sense anyway, with having the raise dead in my hand. So that was just not. That was not good to take that damage. I. I didn't really want to kill the gutter bones though, because I wanted to devout decree it. But even then, I could have just devout decreed it right away instead of playing the one-one right away. So I should, could have just done that on turn two. But yep, we had an extra life. So here we go. Rematch for the final boss. Final boss rematch. Time. Gotta hoard those extra lives if you have them. This isn't really a, a... I wouldn't say that that was a mirror. Their deck is much more aggressive than ours. I don't think that was a mirror. Come on, deck. Just draw some lands. Can we draw lands? Yeah, these cards get, they're going to get good cards, but I <clears throat> I think this game just ends in us getting Nyssa into Crisis. I think that that's really how this game's going to end. There we go. Oh, it comes into play tapped. The Scoured Barons, we don't even get to Fen Lurker. It's either Nissa, Krasis, or Card X. Right, Card X is gone. So potentially, potentially they draw land, play land, play Nissa. I draw land. I get to Bell Haunt Krasis potentially. Friend. 
Well, the game's over. They did not draw a land to be able to get rid of Krasis. Moving moving forward, I would I would absolutely play twenty five lands in this deck. When you have like you know a bunch of fives, I think you need twenty five lands. When you have a bunch of fives, I think that's just a requirement. It's, it's miserable to lose games like that. But a loss is a loss. I mean, it's you can definitely lose by flooding out too. All right, so the Playcrafter is out. We played against this kind of deck earlier, so Playcrafter is out. Um, I think I took out Othakaya also. I actually probably took out Legion's End. I did take out Legion's End. That's actually what I did. But I want to take out Othakaya, not Legion's End. Um, what else? One command? No, let's keep commands. Let's take out an Order of Midnight. All right, here we go. No, I don't like Witch's Vengeance too much for the sideboard. Um, yes, that that specific battlefield that my opponent had, it would have been a really good spot to have it, which is Vengeance, but that's not going to come up too much. Like, I don't... A lot of people are kind of moving away from Elementals. Like, it does kill, like, all the Nissa lands, but a lot of people are moving away from, from Elementals, and that's kind of about it. Um, there's not really Night decks being played too much. Uh, I think which is Vengeance is too narrow in the current metagame. Yeah, I, d I don't think Gruesome Menagerie is worth it without a one-drop. I think... I'd, ra I'd rather just have, like, Soren. Uh, they can continue to get back to things over time and just have a bigger impact on the game. <laughs> yeah, our first our first donation deck didn't... One didn't take too long. We've got a long, long leak here. This deck plays some slow games, but that's all right. Huh. Does make me want a murderous rider leaf can druid. But of course, the problem with murderous riding leaf can druid is then we don't like they're gonna we're not killing our opponent fast at all, so they're gonna eventually draw lands and you know play their Nissa, and then we're, we're not gonna be able to kill Nissa. Or kill Oko, or you know, kill things like that. I'm doing good, boot. Doing good. Yep, had a a good productive day today, and we got four different. Interesting donation decks here for today. But yeah, you're right. Um, you're right there, Factory. Like, this is just a really slow format. Yeah, we're four, four and a half hours into the stream, and, you know, this is our 10th match. Four and a half hours is just a really slow format. But yeah, as far as the number of lands go, just in general, I think if you want to hit your fifth land drop all the time, you know, if you want to like hit your first five land drops and you don't really have too much help hitting your first five land drops, play 25 lands. You're not always going to, but 24 is a little too low. Now, obviously, here we got six lands. So that's good. The other, the other good thing about playing extra land, playing extra land, is it it does make it like how remember we played some of these games earlier. 
<laughs> I suppose. I've got it. Thanks, Samantha. Um, we played some games earlier where we got to just put a whole bunch of lands on the bottom with Charming Prince. Speaking of Charming Prince, these last games that we've been losing, we've had zero Charming Prince to help us out. Because I do like that with Charming Prince where you can dump extra lands to the to the bottom and you, you don't really have to worry too much about drawing more lands because um, like you can be confident that you're going to draw more lands anyway. Thanks, Samantha, though. Thank you very much. Yeah, I like that, Ripper. So, um, long question short, basically, what do you think about transformative sideboards and why do we almost never see them? Um, they can be really effective, but the thing about trans if you're playing a transformational sideboard, which means that you're basically playing um, like a completely different deck after sideboarding, you bring in a whole bunch of cards, take out a whole bunch of cards, so your opponent sideboards to play against deck A that you had in game one and you bring in and you basically change your deck to be deck B. The thing about that is it has to be effective against basically everything because it takes up so many slots to be able to to be able to do that. And you're not and so because of that you're not going to be able to have a lot of slots for other things. So you know like that has to be a either your your game one plan has to be able to beat um, you know, a, a good amount of decks, and <clears throat> and then your your sideboard plan has to be effective against everything, or at least if if not everything, whatever it your uh, transformational sideboard does not help with, then. I should I should attack Teferi. I should attack there and throw in a trade. That was that was bad. Sorry. Um, then your like game one plan has to be good enough to to win the other matchups um, that you're trying to win, even side even post sideboard when your opponent sideboards for your game one matchup. That game one matchup still has to be able to win those, and so it, it's difficult. Like that's that's a, a hard thing to pull off, and so that's why we don't see it very much. I think, uh, what's a good best of one deck? I think that Simic Flash is a good best of one deck. Um, yeah, that, that, that deck's very good in best of one. Um, besides that, I've played some other best of one decks recently on the YouTube channel, usually on Monday. Um, played like seven decks kind of recently. And while the first two didn't work out too well, but then the other five all looked very respectable if you want some other ideas. Hmm. I should have just blocked that that Midnight Reaper before. It's the best way to build a collection with the new set: sealed, then gold draft, then open packs. Yeah, yeah. If you like, if you like sealed and draft, um, yeah. If you like playing limited, that's definitely the best way to build a collection with the new set. Absolutely, that is by by far. So yeah, I recommend doing that for sure. I've got time. 
if you're you know if you're trying to get all all of the cards from Throne of Eldraine, for example. Like you don't get cards from everything, but but yeah, playing sealed and and drafting best thing to do there. I'm sorry, Kiki GK, I missed your question. What's the state of aggressive red decks in the new format? Pretty poor. Um, a lot of food tokens. A lot of good removal. Um, a lot of incidental life gain everywhere. A lot of life link creatures. Not a not a great spot for not a great metagame for aggressive red decks which is one of the reasons why the games take so long open your heart to the magic that dances around you i think a little merriment is in order i wonder if we should have like a kaya's wrath in the sideboard opponents just sitting over here at three lands and we're dead I don't have any chance against that, Oko. And Wicked Wolf, all that stuff. All right, four and two. What, we don't even get a prize? There it goes. All right, so yeah, our, our final boss playlist didn't work out for us. Okay, so a lot of good stuff happening with the deck. Um, we saw there those last few games we didn't have the Charming Princes. It made our deck look worse. Okay, so we we are... So a couple of things about the deck. I would really want a 25th land. I don't want Playcrafter at all. I want all four Murderous Rider in the main. I kind of think that, that this deck, honestly, shouldn't really be in a, a Yara deck. I think a Yara makes the mana a little tough. I like Bellhaunt and Soren, and I think that you don't really need to be triple black a Yara. Um, we need more... I mean, I guess just playing uh, for Murderous Rider would help, but we need more ways to deal with Planeswalkers. But yeah, that. So if we play for Murderous Rider, play an extra land. Like, I don't know, like a Plains or something. I this deck was definitely impressive, and I I've been wanting to put together. Um, a deck like this. I don't think Order of Midnight is worth a slot whatsoever. I think Order of Midnight is just such a worse Soren. Like I think just. Soren is just miles better than Order of Midnight. Like there's, there's just no reason to play that card. Um, if we got rid of those. It does... Ayara does, you know, like, sacri sacrificing these things, like, does make these things better. I just put in a bunch of bunch more fours, and that's not great, but... Bellhaunt and Soren are both so good. Especially Bellhaunt after these things. Maybe another Reaper. To just make it a, a three mana card. Soren makes our Command the Dread Horde a whole lot better and everything, too. Um. Othakaya didn't really look very good. Othakaya wasn't really killing things. I was I was a little surprised of Othakaya not being great. I think you could probably just go with like one Othakaya. Um See, so like this is kind of like a, a starting point maybe. You know, I'd still kind of want to to see, but I, I, I was really impressed with Charming Prince. Um the all the discard stuff did real well for us. We should probably have like one Ayara in the deck. I'm not sure. Probably maybe not have five five drops. 
the the Cavalier of Knights were really good for us, just kind of overall though. They did a lot. Um, Cavalier of Knight with Charming Prince was awesome. Like that's just an awesome combination. That was really cool. Um, and yeah, side sideboard. These days, I'm putting three. So like, as far as sideboard goes, I think this these days, if you're playing blue or black, I think that at least three or four. I think like that that you have to play at least three or maybe four Ashiok. I, I don't think you can play any like I think every blue and black deck should just have three or four Ashiok because Golos Field of the Dead is um is just the most popular deck right now and it's a really really good deck and Ashiok is very effective against them. And so I think that like right now with it being the most popular deck and um And with how effective Ashiok is against that deck, against all the variants of it, um, I think that it's it's pretty necessary to have three or four of those in everything. You're siding in Wrath against Nyssa, against against decks that are full of mana creatures and Nyssas. They like turn their lands into creatures and everything. I think Kaya's Wrath could be good there. Um, I'll probably just go two to rest with these other discard spells. So yeah, basically, um, I don't know, like, like they just don't, they haven't, um, they haven't started putting anything in their sideboard against Ashiok too much. Um, I don't really know what their plan is against Ashiok, but I've been having a whole lot of success with Ashiok against those decks. And that, like I said, they're real popular, um, because they really rely on circuitous route and, uh, Golos to get extra lands and so like not being able to get extra lands hinders them quite a bit they don't have rejuvenator anymore I feel like rejuvenator would get them extra lands where it's not searching um, so like even some of them play like the beanstalk giant which is a search effect but then also just exile in their library like they every single card in their their library is basically a win con you know, like if you're exiling like lands um, you know, that's less lands they can use with Field of the Dead and everything. So I've really liked Ashiok there. But yeah, this is a deck that I'll, I'll could, you know, I'll, uh, take a, a more in-depth look at and, and, you know, mana base, all that kind of stuff later. But Charming Prince was really impressive, uh, especially with Cavalier of Night. So this was a, a really cool deck here. But we need to move on to our other one. So if you're watching the video later on on YouTube... Um, please hit the like and subscribe buttons over there and please leave some comments. Let me know what you think of the deck. Uh, how do you like this deck compared to like some of the mono black decks that we've played? Um, and uh, yeah, all that kind of stuff. If you're playing the deck, if you're trying it out, let me know how it goes, what you're doing well with, against, what you're struggling against. So like, you know, if I play it, you know, like next time I play it, I have some more uh, info there. So, you know, feel free to leave some comments. Um, but uh, thank you so much for watching some more Zon Value, and I'll see you for the next video.